Martin Quadcopter 101 here and today's shout out goes to Hamster Racing 3983. Hamster Racing 3983 was first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus wins a shout out so congratulations. Good morning Quadcopter 101 here and I have something interesting for you today. This is the Potensic Remote ID Module RID 916. Now those of you out there know that uh, those, if you're flying an aircraft, a remote controlled aircraft, either a drone or an airplane or a helicopter or anything that flies under remote control that weighs greater than 250 grams or 0.55 pounds, that you are going to need to register that drone. In addition, here in the U.S., I'm, and keep in mind, folks, I'm focusing on the United States and I'm focusing on beginner pilots for my... Uh, uh, for this video for the remote ID. Although this remote ID module is usable throughout the world, uh, I'm going to go over the procedures to set it up for the U.S. only. <laughs> sorry for, sorry for the, my international viewers, but I'm really not familiar with uh, each different country's uh, requirements for remote, regarding remote ID, but I am more or less uh, familiar with what's required in the U.S. So that's what we're going to focus on with this. Now, as of March 16th, 2024, all pilots that have a drone that requires registration, in other words, a drone that weighs, or a drone or an RC aircraft that weighs more than 250 grams, 0.55 pounds, they are going to need to register that drone. And in addition, if they're flying outside of a FAA recognized identification area, I'll go over that here shortly, what that is. But an FRIA, if you're flying outside of one of those and you want to fly that 250 gram drone, you're going to need to include a remote ID system on your aircraft if it doesn't already have it. Now, newer drones these days, most of the newer or higher end drones these days already have RID modules built in, but uh, there are a few folks out there that are still flying their older drones or lower um, quality drones, let's say that, that don't have RID modules already built in them. So if you have a heavy drone, a heavy drone, 250 grams or more, that requires RID, you can install one of these external modules. Now, these, these just get inserted by or installed by tape, taping them on or Velcroing, Velcroing them onto your drone. And it provides the coverage required under the FAA to uh, provide remote identification of the drone. Now, let's talk about that FRIA real quick. Federal or FAA recognized identification area. These are areas that the FAA has set up across the U.S. that if you fly inside them, inside these areas, you don't require this 250 or you don't require to be transmitting uh, remote ID. Most of these are model aircraft um, clubs, um, AMA uh, sponsored clubs throughout the country. Um, there was very few of them to begin with. That's why they extended the deadline to March 16th to get all these uh, clubs registered within the FAA's website. And there is a FAA um, uh, sponsored page that you can click on and it'll show remote ID areas in, or FRIA areas in your local uh, vicinity. In fact, there's uh, two within 20 miles where I live here. I was surprised because there wasn't in the past, but now there is. So they are pop, uh, cropping up if you don't want to go with the remote ID module. Uh, method. But most of us out there want the freedom to be able to fly uh, where they can <laughs> and use this R uh, uh, remote ID module to enable them to do that and stay legal with the FAA. Now, what does this RID do? It transmits the drone's current location, its takeoff location, and ownership info of the pilot. Um, it, what it does is it transmits in the blind uh, using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This particular model uses Bluetooth. But it uh, transmits it in the blind. So if law enforcement or if FAA is in the area and gets complaints about a drone flying by doing things that it shouldn't do, they can come up and use their receiver to re find out the uh, where that drone came from and who owns that drone. That's the purpose of this module. Okay. Okay. Let's go over specifics of this particular module. Um, it uses it has a built-in GPS, GLONASS, BIDAL. And also QZSS. What does that mean? It has four different uh, GPS systems. One for the United States GPS. It has the Russian GLONASS system. It has the Chinese uh, Baidao system. Baidoa, I'm sorry. 
pronouncing it wrong, and the Japanese QZSS satellite system, GPS satellite system. So all three of these are built into this uh, to provide location data on the drone. This only weighs 19 grams, okay? It doesn't add, add much to your drone drone's weight, and it's attached very easily either using uh, double-sided tape or provided Velcro that's included with it. Now, it transmits that information, as I mentioned before, using Bluetooth. The range of that Bluetooth is up to 300 meters, about 1,000 feet, and uh, it's powered by a little 3.7 volt, 310 milliamp per hour battery that uh, supposedly gives this transmission power for up to four hours. Now, it's charged. I'm going to have to open this up here, folks. I need to, there's one thing about this. You need to use a pin to open this up. My fingernails just don't do it, okay? You got to get a little pin in there to open up the charging port. Well, let's do that here shortly. Hold on, folks. Again, you know, my fingernails are short, and it's hard to open this thing up with short fingernails. So you are going to need to use a pin for most people to open it. And you open it from the, the switch side of the door. Okay, that pops it open with a pin. And you can get inside to see what we got here. Now, you notice we have a charging port. It's Type-C USB charging port to charge with the provided cable. And this cable also is used with your computer to enter the required data uh, to upgrade this particular device and enter the, your, your ownership data inside <laughs> the uh, module. Now, the on-off switch, you turn it on by holding it for three seconds until all the lights light up. And we see we got three lights. This means it is fully charged. And we notice we get a blinking green light. And what that means, it's looking for satellites to lock onto the satellites. And when it turns uh, steady green, that means you have sufficient satellites to take off. And once you do that, before you take off, you need to press this button. I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that here shortly if this does lock on. But you press this uh, on-off switch uh, with a quick press after you get a solid green, and that'll update the takeoff point for the drone and you want to do that before you take off you'll and you'll get a uh, momentary blue light flash to tell you that it's done that and then you can go flying with this particular drone other lights on this if it turns flashing red that means you're low battery these lights will uh, extinguish before that you get to that point there and another light that you can possibly get is a solid uh, red light in the, indicating a malfunction of the um, or, or remote id so it's real simple operation, in effect. You know, you just turn it on and turn it off. What's hard about it is, is the initial setup that you need to do and also uh, registering it with the FAA. And I'll go over that next. Okay, uh, the next section here I'm going to explain here is uh, you need to register with the FAA if you have that heavy drone. Now, I'm going to focus on uh, recreational pilots only in this. Okay, I don't want to get into the Part 107, mainly because 90% of my viewers are all beginner pilots, they're all recreational pilots, nearly 99%. Uh, the Part 107 pilots, they, they outgrow me and move on, and they're <laughs> rarely coming back to see my videos. And that's good. That's what my channel's intended to, you know, to help you grow, and then eventually you, you outgrow Quadcopter 101 and move on. So that's why I'm focusing on the uh, beginner pilots on this, the uh, recreational pilots. Now, again, the first thing you need to do, if you have one of those heavy drones, that weighs 250 grams or more, or 0 0.5 pound, five, five pounds or more, you're going to need to register it. And you just get a single, you're, actually, you don't register the drone as a recreational pilot. You register yourself. You get a registration number, and you get it from the FAA. And that's good for all of your heavier uh, than 250 gram drones. Now, again, Part 107 pilots is different. Part 107 pilots need to register all their drones that <laughs> weigh that much. They weigh greater than 250 grams. Uh, recreational pilots do not. So keep that in mind. You only need to get an FAA registration number for yourself. And you put that on all, your, all of your heavy drones. Okay. You just write it on a piece of tape and just tape it onto your drone. That's all you need to do. Okay. With that single number. So you pay $5 one time. Okay. You don't pay $5 to register. I'll go over this later. But <laughs> you only register yourself one time as a recreational pilot and pay that $5 one time. Now, um, to get that registration, you need to go to the FAA.gov website. And once you got that, I'm not going to go over how to do that. You're going to need to learn how to do that yourself. I think I have another video somewhere that shows how to do that. But once you get that, you also need to register this device on the FAA website. Once you have your um, FAA registration number. 
and it's free to, to register this device, to add this device to your um, inventory. Now, you go to the FAA's website and log in. After you have your registration number, you out, you'll be given a, an account along with a login, pass, login ID and a login password. So log into that account on the web, FAA's website and um, select Launch Drone Owners and then and Pilots Dashboard. Once you've done that, select Manage Device Inventory. Then select Add Device. And on that page, fill in add. You fill in the add device pop-up window that shows up. You want to select first yes for broadcasting RID info. Then you select the device type, which is a RID broadcast module. Then give it a nickname. In my case, I gave it RID 916 since that's its model number. And then um, option A. Um, there's optional. You can enter the US UAS manufacturer and model in my case i put in my potential one potential drone that does weigh over 250 grams into that then you enter in the rid serial number now that rid remote id serial number is available on the front of your device in very tiny letters but there is a qr code use your qr use your camera on your your um, phone to uh, zoom in on that rid or that QR code, and that'll list the uh, um, serial number of this device. Or if you get about a magnifying glass, that serial number is four different rows of five numbers each, <laughs> 20 numbers in total. Um, write that whole long 20 number serial number down because you'll need to enter it into the FA's website. And um, let's see. And once you enter that, all you need to do is click Add Device and this module will be entered into your inventory on the FAA. Okay, once you've had this en entered into your inventory on the FAA's website, you need to set it up. And to do that, all you do is plug in this cable into that USB port on the front and plug it into your computer and turn it on. If you don't turn it on, I'll, I'll tell you what happens if you don't turn it on here shortly. But if what you need to do is... Uh, Open the Potensic Setup website, and they have an app on their website, how to set this up, and I'll include that link below, and select Language. In my case, I selected English. Then you scroll down the page and select Allow Connection. Now, if you get a device abnormal alert, that means you didn't turn on the module. <laughs> okay, to get rid of that device abnormal alert, just hold down this uh, power button for three seconds until it powers up, and that should go away. Okay, after that, look for and select uh, RID 916 and click Connect. You also might need to select and connect to the serial port, uh, then allow connection if that shows up. Next thing I want to do is probably ask you to upgrade, and you want to do that. So click on Upgrade and leave the device connected as it goes through the upgrade process. Wait until you see Upgrade Succeeded pop-up window. And once you see that, close that pop-up window. Then scroll further down the page to the data writing section on that uh, web page. There's a data writing section. There you want to enter select equipment type, drone or airplane, in my case, multi-rotor drone. Then, enter, then you enter your registration ID. Again, for you recreational pilots, it's just simply your FAA registration number. And um, that's about it, I believe. <laughs> Uh, the others, uh, the other entries on that page are optional, and a lot of them are for actually for Europe. Europe requires a few other uh, um, items that I really don't uh, am unfamiliar with, so I'm not going to go over here. But once you enter your registration number and uh, the remote or RID number for this, then select right. Then you just simply power off the device, and you're done. So that's it. You know, again, I'm still waiting for the GPS to come up on this, but it's a fairly simple setup. Um, <laughs> I hope it's not too confusing what I said here. But again, what you get with this, let's go over what you get in the package with this particular device. You get the RID module. It's still looking for that GPS. I'm down in my basement. It's not going to get that GPS down here. <laughs> 
outside it gets it pretty quickly, but not down here. Um, you also get either double-sided tape you could use or uh, Velcro. I recommend using the Velcro. You get an instruction manual for the drone or for the uh, uh, module, along with uh, more detailed instructions that you can go get by scanning this QR code on this particular device. I'll hold it up like this so you can, folks out there can do that if they want to see that. You also get the cable, and this is a little camera mount if, in case you don't want to attach it to your particular drone uh, using Velcro or tape. You can use a camera mount if it has such by using double-sided tape, I would recommend using in that particular case. So that's it. That's the RID 916. It'll give you that, um, it'll help you uh, get that uh, requirement of having remote ID on your drones that weigh 250 grams at a relatively inexpensive price, actually. I believe it's around 70 bucks, to tell you the truth right now. I don't know if uh, that's its final price, but we'll see. So again, that's the RID 916 from Potensic. Hope you enjoyed this review. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks. Thank you.